Hello everyone, our microcontroller and embedded systems. The next onboard communication interface is one wire interface. One wire interface is an asynchronous half duplex communication protocol developed by Maxim Dollar Semiconductor. It is also known as one dollars one wire protocol. It makes use of only a single signal line called DQ for the communication and follows the master slave communication model. One of the key features of one wire bus is that it allows power to be sent along the signal wire as well. The slave device incorporates the internal capacitor to power the device from the a signal line. A typically of the order of, of 800 pico period of capacitor value is used. The one wire interface supports a single master and one or more slave devices on the bus. A bus interface diagram shown in the figure illustrates the connection of a master and slave devices on the one wire bus. You can see here. Every one wire device contains a globally unique 64 bit identification number stored within it. It is important here. This unique identification number can be used for addressing individual devices present on the bus in case there are a multiple sleeve devices connected to the one wire bus. The identifier has three parts. Out of the 64, uh, it has three parts. An 8-bit family code, a 48-bit serial number, and a 8-bit CRC computed from the first 56 bits. This 64-bit is divided into three parts, 8 bits, 48 bits, and again 8 bits. The sequence of operations for the communicating with the one-wire slave device is listed below. There are total five steps here. The master device sends a reset pulse on the one wire bus. The slave device present on the bus responds with the a present pulse. Third operation, the master device sends a ROM command that is the net address followed net address command followed by the 64 address a 64 bit address of the device. This address the slave device to which it wants to initiate the a communication. The fourth operation. The master device sends a read or write function command to read or write the internal memory or register of the slave device. The last operation. The master initiates a read write or write data from the device or to the a device. All communication over one wide bus is master initiated. The communication over one wide bus is divided into a time slots of 60 microseconds. The reset pulse occupies eight time slots. For starting a communication, the master assets the reset pulse by pulling the one wire bus low for at least eight time slots that is minimum of uh, 480 a microseconds if a slave device is present on the bus and is ready for the communication it should respond to the master with a present pulse within a uh, 60 microseconds of the release of the reset pulse by the master the slow the slave device responds with a, a, present, a presence pulse by pulling the one wire bus low for a minimum of one time slots, that is 60 microseconds. For writing a bit value of one on the one wire bus, the bus master pulls the buses for one to 15 microseconds and then releases the bus for the rest of the time slots. 
a bit value of 0 is written on the bus by master filling the bus for the minimum of one time slots and maximum of two time slots that is 120 microseconds to read a bit from a slave device the master pulls the bus low for the 1 to 15 microseconds if a slave wants to send a bit value 1 in response to the read request from the master it simply releases the bus for the rest of the time slots if the slave wants to send a bit value 0 it pulls the bus low for the rest of the time slots these are the different read and write operations where how to read one how to send zero all these operations can be understood with these four four to five points so these are the uh, onboard communication interfaces that is i square c spi uart and one wide communication so like share comment on the video and don't forget to subscribe the channel we see in the next video thank you